Hello. In this video, I'm going to do two things. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you about validation, and I'm going to talk to you about the three types of validation, and then I'm going to give you an example of how you can do this in code. Now, validation is an important principle in the idea of data integrity. Generally speaking, you should not trust anything that the user gives you. You should check that it's suitable. At the dangerous end of things, this if you don't check it, this leaves you open to things like um, SQL injections, and it just leads to your program breaking, particularly as some programming languages are quite intolerant of you giving them the wrong sort of information. And also, you just want stuff in a particular format for the purpose of your database and for the purpose of your program. So, generally speaking, here are the three validations that you do in this order. First of all, existence. Did they give you something? Second, is it the right type of information? And here I'm talking about data types. If you wanted an integer, is it an integer? Is it a string that you asked for? Is it a Boolean that you asked for? Uh, is it the right length? It might need to contain a particular set of data. You might be checking to see if it's an email address. And finally, the range checking. Now, that might be, is it too long or too short? Is it too high a number? Is it too low a number? That sort of thing. So, again, in order, does it exist? Is it the right type? And is it the right in the right range? Let's have a look at this Python function that I've built. So this function up here is called validation and we're passing in the question. So you'll see down here that I'm going to call the function by saying user number equals validation and that's the name of the function and that's the argument I'm passing in. So once we're inside the function, we're going to assume that we, they're giving us nonsense. At the moment, it's false. Now, so long as it's false, here on line three, we're going to keep putting them through. We're going to like lock them in this room until they behave, and then we'll let them out. Okay, we are going to do a user input equals input question. So that's going to show the question, and they're going to get to answer it. Then we are going to check and see if the input has a length of longer than zero. So I'm checking for existence. If they just hit enter and put nothing in, well, then that fails that test, and they just go straight back to while it's false, and they'll just be asked the question again. If they pass that one, well, I'm going to try and cast it as an integer. Now, the more alert of you will have realized I can try to collect it as an integer in, um, with a try in Python, but I'm deliberately doing this in the order of does it exist, is it the right type, and checking, checking the range. So I'm going to try and cast it here on line 7. If it fails that try, then I'm going to print an error message. And if it um, passes that, then I'm going to say, well, if user blah, blah, blah. So if it's in the right range, I'm going to make valid true. And I'm going to return back into the main program that thing. Now, what I did realize is it would also be good to have an else here statement. So if and else. So if the number is right, is um, too small. Uh, I'm just going to put this is, um, well, the range is wrong. It's not a great error message, but it'll do. Okay, the range is wrong. Terrific. All right, let's run it. So what is my number? Well, failed the existence test. Didn't get something that was longer than nothing, so it fails. Let's try putting in a space. Okay, well, that passed the existence test because it is something but I couldn't cast it as a number. So it said, please enter a whole number. And now it's throwing me back to the start of, um, where are we? Line three. We're still in that while loop. Okay, let's give it a number, 101. Okay, well it passed existence and it passed integer, but it, the range is wrong. So let's put something which is valid on all counts. It will pass all the tests and it spits us out the other end of the function. So that's just a simple, um, subroutine or function that you could build into any Python program and you can just set it up to validate what it is that you want to validate and that way you know you've got information that you could work with. But this is true across all, um, all programming languages. Really important skill to be able to validate your input. 